Good morning, guys. I hope you guys are well. This is just a very quick word um, before I get out the rest of the words today. This is not really a word. It's just something that, just like a revelation and just something that really just like woed me, okay? So I'm driving and this morning I just let my phone play. <laughs> um, Just play like whatever playlist and this automatic playlist came on. And then I started hearing songs from... Um, there's a soundtrack. I like the Spirit, the Sally and Horse soundtrack. Um, I think like Brian Adams is is on the sound. Yeah, I think Brian Adams is on the soundtrack. But um, I remember like in the past in 2016 when I was going through like the worst warfare of my entire life. Okay, like that was the worst year of my entire life. Um, <clears throat> I was literally so afflicted to the point where I could not even think. Their spirit of insanity took over my brain. Whatever they were doing with <clears throat> the witchcraft took over my brain at the time. I couldn't think. I couldn't focus. I couldn't function. It was so bad. And I remember that when I used to play that soundtrack, it motivated me because the soundtrack was about like, you know, being free and the soundtrack was about like, there's a song and the song's like, you can't take me, I'm free. And every time I would hear the song, I'm, I would like be motivated to fight. Like, no, you got to fight the witchcraft. You got to fight what they're doing to you. And I would get up, brush my teeth, try to get my day together, even though I would feel the, the spirit afflicting my body and tormenting my brain. And I just remember like, I used to play these songs to motivate myself and also I would play some like worship. I was playing like Michael W. Smith and I was remember I was I was literally fighting for my life. Like I remember I was just fighting, like fighting just to like stay sane, like because I knew that there was something being done to me. And just to think that every time I was playing this music, just to think that the person that was also afflicting me, that was a part of it, they would always be under my nose. The fact they would like stop and look at me, are you okay? And asking me all these questions, looking at my eyes and you know, and, and telling me, oh, you're, are you okay? I think something's wrong with you mentally. Like, the fact that this person literally watched me play these soundtracks, fighting, trying to get up, trying to start my day. Like, they were hearing all the songs I was playing to motivate myself to keep going. They were watching me, like, literally fight for my life. They were watching me cry. They were watching me suffer. And to think the person that was a part of this was watching all that and literally sat there and was okay with watching me struggle, was okay with watching me suffer like that, is mind-boggling. And, you know, when I was listening to the soundtrack, you know, I was telling God, like, God, like, it will, it literally will be the person right under your nose doing this to you. And they will be right there because the person that is the closest to you, they're able to you know, keep tabs on how the attacks are afflicting you, how the witchcraft is afflicting you compared to like someone that's not in your home, right? So it's literally the person like right under your nose. And even if they're not in your home, like one thing I'm going to say is that if you are experiencing um, witchcraft afflictions and it's like a thorn where like it, the afflictions keep coming back and you don't know who's doing it, you don't know why they keep doing it or who's doing it. Let me tell you something. If it's like an ex, a bitter ex, or if it's like a bitter friend or a bitter colleague or something like that, the afflictions don't last for a long time. Sometimes it can be years if it's like an ex. But if it's just someone like you work with or someone that you just met or a stranger, they don't keep it going for a long time. They may attack you here and there, but they're not going to spend like years or the rest of their life trying to afflict you. You see what I'm saying? Like an ex, like someone who's like, crazy in love with someone and don't want you being with them like they may attack you for years okay or they don't want you to move on they may attack you for years right but when it comes to like family someone that you have blood with that you see them or you're in contact with them they will keep it going and if you notice that like, you've been afflicted with witchcraft for a very long time chances are it's someone that's very close to you and it's someone that is right under your nose and you have to remember something when someone is afflicting you for a consistent amount of time they got to keep tabs on you they got to see if it's working so they got to monitor you so even if they're not under the roof of your house they're gonna always call you they're gonna always check up on you they're gonna always email you like they're gonna come check in once in a while to see how you're doing they're gonna monitor your social media but I'm just saying, if you've been experiencing witchcraft afflictions for a long time and you're like, man, it's been going on for years, it's someone right under your nose. I'm letting you know that right now. It's someone right under your nose, okay? Strangers are not going to keep it going out. Strangers will not waste their time going years attacking you. Trust me, they won't. 
they won't. I've been attacked from many different people. And trust me, the longest affliction has been family, someone that is right under my nose, or someone that's connected to my blood. Also, the strongest affliction, like witchcraft is not stronger than God. Let me just get that straight because I know y'all about to jump in the comment section trying to check me with that. Obviously, I know witchcraft is not stronger than God. But what I mean is like the most strongest affliction out of all the afflictions of witchcraft that you may experience is someone that is from your blood. Because why you guys share the same blood? So when a person from your blood is afflicting you, it will feel a lot more heavier compared to like a stranger or an ex, depending on like the practitioner they're using. But when it's family, it's usually the strongest because they need... Um, they need to have some sort of like ties to you, spiritual ties to you. And usually that's blood. Okay. So anyways, I wanted to just share that with you guys. Like it will literally be the people right under your nose. Remember how Joseph's brothers lied to their dad and said how Joseph was dead and Joseph wasn't even dead, but look how they lied to their dad and they kept that light going on. Remember, their dad was mourning, like mourning for him. And they watched Joseph's dad mourn. They went on with that life for years, making people think Joseph was dead, watching people suffer, watching people blame themselves, whatever types of, you know, guilt people may have felt, knowing that he was alive, knowing that they tried to afflict him and all this type of stuff. Like, it will be the people right under your nose. And they will sit there and have you cry on their shoulder. They will sit there and pat you on the back, knowing deep down what they're doing to you. This is why the Lord says we have to be very like cautious of who we have around us. Because it would be the person right under your nose. It's sad. And they will literally watch you cry and watch you suffer. And then they will be the very ones to call you mentally ill and be the very ones who are trying to check you in the hospital and the psych ward. But they're the ones afflicting you. I'm telling you right now, if you've been going through witchcraft afflictions for a very long time and you're like, man, it's been going on for years, it may not be and it, it may not be that stranger, it may not be that employer. Like, yeah, they may add on to it because there's such things as called like layered spells. Like when multiple people are, are attacking you, it's called layered spells, right? You know, layered attacks. But if you're noticing there's a specific attack that just keeps coming back. And you're like, man, I'll feel fine for a week. And then it comes back again. That is a family member. That is someone that is connected to your blood. You know, so pray about it. And regardless, God is more powerful. We rebuke, denounce, and cancel. But it's really good to just have knowledge and just to know. Okay, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.